What's up guys, War here, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm bringing you another last minute video before season four starts tomorrow and I'm gonna break down what my class choice is going to be. All right, I've kind of gone back and forth with this a lot. And you know, it was kind of between Necromancer and Sork. I really wasn't sure. Um, I was kind of very excited to play Necromancer because of the minion buffs. But then they got a slight nerf and they're still super strong. But um, there's a lot of changes coming to Necromancer. So that is definitely high on the tier list. Uh, I definitely wanted to play Druid because Druid is just a fan favorite and it's just a tank. Uh, and of course, you know, there's always Barbarian, which is super cool. Rogue, gosh, man, we just need rapid fire Adam Jackson. Help a brother out. But my choice is going to be sork okay and i'm gonna tell you why i've played sork in pretty much everything alpha 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 beta beta open beta and then all the seasons right we've played it all the way through up to season four and there's a number of reasons why i like sork and i've talked about this in other videos um tier list videos and just things of that nature just kind of breaking down why i play so much sork and Sork is just so consistent across the board. Um, it's still one of the strongest and most powerful classes of the game. It's very versatile, 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 and uh, versatile. And it really just has like a lot of builds that I just really, truly enjoy playing. Like they're really fun to me, right? So uh, we are going to be starting off with Sork. Now, I'm going to have a guide for you that will be in the stream tomorrow. We're going to be streaming here live on YouTube. We'll also be dual streaming over to Twitch. So if you guys prefer to view over there, twitch.com backslash warlock. But we're going to be here streaming live tomorrow all day for Diablo 4, which I'm really excited about. So make sure you guys come around the stream. But we are going to be playing Sork. Okay, we're going to be playing Sork. It's going to be a blast. And the build that I'm probably going to be starting off with to level with is going to be uh, Firewall. We're going to play Firewall to start. It is still the best leveling build, in my opinion, for Sorceress. And we combine it with um, Hydra's. When you combine Firewall with Hydras, it becomes very, very powerful. So you get the, the big AoE damage and burns from the Firewalls, right? They do all kinds of damage. And then you have Hydras just as really to help kill, you know, the elites and bosses, uh, things of that nature. Just be able to kill the stronger monsters as you're leveling up. So we're going to be playing Firewall Hydra um, for our leveling build. And then once we get to like the early endgame World Tiers 3, World Tier 4, it's really tough guys i want to transition to play frozen orb okay i want to play frozen orb with the brand new amulet the issue is is that in order to get the amulet i don't even think i have any on me uh yeah in order to get the amulet you are required to go kill zur okay you have to kill zur and there's a big issue with trying to fight zur right especially once you get to like you know world tiers three at a very minimum the biggest problem is that it requires the exquisite bloods okay it requires the exquisite bloods we need nine of these to fight zir and it's uh it's a bit of a problem who is this talking shut up um <laughs> and these are really hard to find now i will say this they're collected from world bosses and legion events however you are able to get them now through any forms of content right like you can be able to get them through any forms of content killing elites doing hell tides opening the chests in hell tides which are you know super important you know doing dungeons killing the dungeon bosses the, these kind of things now we don't know how many we're going to be able to get or how often the exquisite bloods will drop so the fact that the amulet only drops from zur makes it a little bit more difficult um however I do have a backup. I will be playing um, Meteors. I really want to play Meteors. I did start off with this build in Season 3 because it was brand new. We had the Starfall Coronet, which was really awesome. And it made the build super fun to play. However, there was a few like small things. We weren't really able to get our cooldowns enough to be able to like kind of spam the Meteor. And then second, they are a little bit slow when they come down to hit the enemies. Now, you do have the the, the Mage's Meteor here. It makes them fall 30% faster, which is good. 
but it's very, very hard to give that up when Meteors impacts enemies and immobilizes them, which gives us even more damage. Now, we don't really need the immobilize, but we do gain 9% bonus increased critical strike damage against burning enemies, which is super important. So it's kind of hard to give that up. But even with that said, I don't mind the speed of the Meteors dropping because if we can get our cooldowns fast enough, then we can just spam it. And we are able to do that. Okay, if I go over to lovely, lovely Twitter here, if I go over to Twitter, right, I'm going to show you guys because I'm pretty sure I did save this and it was super cool, um, but I think it's over on Rob's channel. So let me shout out to Rob here. Um, the meteor, the meteor build was able to get like the cooldown was able to get so, so fast that you can just infinitely spam it. Let me go to his YouTube real quick. I know it's on his channel, guys. Big shout out to Rob here in the community. He does mad work, guys. He He's more of a Diablo-esque guy than me. He does much more work. He's an amazing guy, man. Um, but Meteor Sork is insane here. So you guys are going to see that, like, you can increase the, the cooldowns here of the ability, right? Like, so and we're going to be doing that through Ice Blades. So Ice Blades is really what's going to be able to reduce our cooldown. And if you guys notice right here, Meteor, if you guys notice, Meteor just infinitely resets. So we're able to spam it. And look at that AoE. It just seems like a super fun build. And it's, I think that this from the PTR minus some changes is probably going to be, this is where Meteor should be. Like this just seems really good. This is a, a, a pit 200. Now I know the pit levels have changed, right? But I still think Meteor is going to be really, really fun to play. It just looks super cool. The way that we're able to reset this so much is because of Ice Blades. Ice Blades receives 100% of your character stats. So if you have crazy attack speed, Ice Blades gets crazy attack speed. And Ice Blades is what resets all of our cooldowns and our skills, in particular Meteor, right? Now, we do need to try to get a six-second Starfall Coronet. We are going to need that to help with the reset. But... The reason that this is the backup as opposed to the Frozen Orb build is because you can go get the Starfall Coronet from the Beast in the Ice. Okay, Beast in the Ice is right down here, right? Glacial Fissure, and you can craft these all day long, right? And we can just, as long as we're doing Tier 31 Nightmare Dungeons, we can just infinitely get the little waters to go fight him. And then we have a much better chance of getting the Starfall Coronet. And it's much easier to attain it as opposed to trying to get the Exquisite Blood to go fight Zer. So I'm going to be playing uh, Firewall, guys. We're going to be playing Firewall into hopefully Frozen Orb. If not, we will be playing it into Meteor, which I think is going to be my initial build. And then we'll, we'll use Meteor to just kind of farm up everything else, which will be super fun. So yeah, guys, that is what I'm going to be playing. I am super, super excited. I'll have a leveling guide for you for Firewall for all those that want to join me in stream tomorrow and that just want to check out and play Sork this upcoming season. I know that there's going to be a lot of players playing Necromancer. I know that people are ecstatic and I'm ecstatic for ne Necromancer players and just Necromancer in general because we finally got minions and it's great. I hope that it really exceeds everybody's expectations. Um, and then after after we probably try to push our Sork to the highest levels of the pit that we can and really just farm up a lot of things, well, that's when we'll probably switch to either Necromancer or Druid. Uh, however, the issue with like playing like Druid, I would probably do this. I'd probably play either Necromancer guys or Rogue and then play Druid and Barbarian last. The reason I say this is because Druid didn't really get much in the PTR. Didn't really get a lot of change in its items. So even though the Druid is still incredibly strong, there's not really a lot of new stuff for the Druid. So I, you know, we may get to him a little late. Um, there is new things with Necromancer and Rogue. I'm really curious about doing the grenade stuff. Um, even though Rogue is really just the worst class in the game, it's not the strongest. Uh, I think just playing something really different and doing all the grenade shenanigans that the Rogue's going to have, I think is going to be pretty cool. So I'm going to try that. And then, of course, we are going to do Necromancer. So we'll probably start with Sork. And then we'll probably leave it up to you guys, the viewers in the community, to kind of pick between these two for the very next character. But um, we plan on just leveling all the way with Helltides all the way through. And going until we can do the Glacier stuff to go fight the um, Beast in the Ice. I'm really curious to see how many resources we can gain 
uh, just from doing the Helltide itself, and then just see where we can go from there on any of the builds. Now, the reason before you guys ask, I know you guys are going to ask, each class does have the presets. They're not sets, but they're items to kind of give you a boost to your character at the start of the season. Shout out to Wildhead here. Um, just I just tried to find this real quick. I didn't want to go back through the video. But um, we got Barbarian is going to receive items for the Dust Devil. So it's going to be legendary item caches, which are going to be legendary like items that you're going to get. So the powers and whatnot. Now, it, it does... I don't really know when exactly we're going to get these. At what point. But Barbarian is going to have Dust Devil, which is super strong. Druid has Pulverize, which is amazing. Right? It's a This build is a very, very good leveling build for Druid. Like, it's probably one of the best, if not the best. Uh, Necromancer, you already get stuff for minions, so for all the Necromage, you guys are already going to be blasting. Rogue gets Barrage, which is probably its best um, build in the game, uh, so you got that. But then for us Sorks, we get Incinerate. The devs have really been like pushing Incinerate a lot. I don't know how good this is going to be. I'm already going to be playing Firewall, so if I do get this stuff, uh, I definitely would like to try it out and just see if it is good um with all the changes so we'll see we'll try it and if it and if it's good then i'll change the order of things you basically just go firewall until you get the items for incinerate play incinerate until you get to whatever you want your end game build to be i'm all about being a fire mage so we're going there uh but yeah guys that is the video i'm gonna be playing sork Let, like the video let's try to get this thing over 50 likes that would be amazing or 100 let's see if you guys can break a record uh, comment down below guys let me know what character are you or what class are you going to be playing in the upcoming season for Diablo 4 let me know and don't forget to subscribe guys and as always stay gaming I'll see you guys in the next one peace